Hi, I'm Chris Holmes, and I'm a professional coach and a watercolor artist. And I want to draw out the, the, some of the principles that I found that are the same as a painter uh, that I find in my work in coaching. So the first is tenacious curiosity. Obviously, to be an artist, you need a sense of imagination and a, uh, a strong sense of curiosity. And um, in fact, Leonardo da Vinci is thought of as being probably the most creative person who's ever lived. I don't know if you know this, but he created the parachute even before the airplane had been uh, uh, conceived of. And um, we bring that same quality of like uh, of, of intense imagination uh, to coaching. The um, you know, somewhere along the way, most of us lost our sense of imagination and curiosity. And your average five-year-old engages in 78 creative tasks a day. Your average 44-year-old engages in an average of two creative tasks a day. And in terms of uh, the number of questions asked by your average five-year-old, um, they'll ask um, on, on par 65 questions a day, and a 44-year-old uh, tends to ask four questions a day. So somewhere along the way, we lost that sense of, of uh, imagination, that curiosity about the world and what's, what's possible. Well, one of the things we do in coaching uh, is to, to uh, try and use the imagination and our sense of curiosity to stay present, fully present to the person we're coaching, to explore things that they may never have explored and all, widen the possibilities and so one of the things it takes to be a coach is a strong, and a watercolor artist, is a tenacious sense of curiosity. Another important uh, principle that bridges uh, painting and coaching is preserving the white space. I don't know if you know this or not, but the one color that an, a watercolor artist does not have on their palette is the color white. We don't even own a tube of it. Uh, because the challenge, uniquely in watercolor painting, is not to paint over, layer with white, but we leave parts of the page, um, the, the actual page that's white showing, um, which is a, quite a challenge. For instance, in this painting that I did, is, uh, this is a, is a house with a picket fence in front of it, and between each of those pickets, I had to draw, I had to paint in the background and leave the space for each picket, uh, just the page that was white. Instead of, in, what, in other forms of painting, acrylics and oils, you can, you can paint the background first and then come layer over with white, but that's not possible with, with watercolors. Um, and so we preserve the white space, and that's the principle I found in coaching that's so helpful in people's lives too. You know, there's nothing wrong with having a big, bold, full, colorful life, but it, without the white space, we can be drowning in the color. And that's what I find in a lot of our lives. We fill up every moment with, with things to do. And so very often in coaching a client, we're looking at, at way, how to build in some white space, where, to, where to, to build in prayer or meditation uh, downtime. Uh, time, that's time without your computer, your iPod, your TV, time to just be. I find that a lot, of, a lot of us are just craving that time to just be, which is the white space in our lives. One of the things I really love that the author John Updike says is that what art offers is space, a certain breathing room for the spirit strikes me that in coaching, we're doing the same thing. We're providing, helping people find space in their life, which is really breathing room for the spirit. Another of these principles that span both are, uh, is regaining perspective. You know, sometimes when I'm painting, I get so tied to the details of what I'm working on that I really need to just take a break and Across the room and see what this looks like from a from a, a wider wider angle. And sometimes I need to just take a break and, and go in the other room for ten or fifteen minutes. And then when I come back, I see everything fresh. And those things that uh, may be a problem in the painting or or maybe out of uh, proportion or whatever jump out at me. 
uh, when I take that time for perspective. Same thing happens in our, our lives, and one of the things that, uh, that we get so into the detail that, that in coaching, um, we could come and ask questions that help people regain some perspective on the, the landscape of their life. We might ask, uh, let's, let's, what would the balcony view of your life look like right now? Or let's go up 3,000 feet and look down all you're doing. What does that look like? Uh, or we might say, challenge a client to close their eyes and, and just imagine, okay, fast forward in, in your mind's eye three years and look back. And in your imagination, where will you be then? Where do you want to be then? Sometimes the question, just the question, what do you want, takes people on this deep inward journey uh, where they regain perspective on, on their lives. Um, ben Zander is a maestro and a conductor who, who works with students uh, at a school of uh, music conservatory. And um, he uh, tells the story of rule number six. And what is rule number six? Uh, rule number six is don't take yourself too damn seriously. <laughs> um, and somebody said, well, what are the other rules? He said, well, there aren't any. <laughs> so I think one of the things we really do in coaching is help people uh, to get perspective on their lives. And it begins with helping them <laughs> not take themselves too damn seriously. The next principle is uh, don't overwork it, and that's really important in in uh, in painting because, especially in watercolors, you know I think an artist uh, chooses a medium that kind of fits their personality. Like oil painters tend to be very perfectionistic and very patient people who keep coming back to get it right. And watercolor artists are like me; they're kind of like impetuous, you know, and they get bored easily. Easily, and it's like we have this get or done attitude. So um, we try not to, to overwork it. It's when you, when I find myself uh, just working and reworking and reworking something, is when I mess it up. So part of the, the skill in painting with watercolors is knowing when to leave it alone. And the, these things happen that are outside our control, like when colors run together. I don't know if you can see around the, the flag banners that are here. Um, that bunting, but the red ran into the blue, and when that happened, I'm going, oh no, I just wrecked the painting. And I let it dry, and I looked at it, and I thought, that's the best part of the painting. It's like the serendipitous surprise of those things that you can't control in watercolor end up becoming some of the coolest things that happen. We also find that in coaching, that... Um, you can't really be a control freak in coaching. It's not like applying some formula that you know where things are going. In, in coaching, uh, it's really a dance. It's a, it's a, a process of staying with a client and, and seeing what emerges. And sometimes the ideas flow together and, and swirl around and create uh, this new awareness for, for the client. Things we never, never especially intended that, to have happen. Um, but that's part of the, the wonder and the, uh, that's part of the beauty of coaching, the art of coaching, to, uh, to not overwork it and not be too tied to control. And the final principle I want to talk about is creating sacred meaning. I think it applies both to, to art, to painting, and to, to coaching. You know, um, art in any form, whether it's poetry, whether it's dance, or sculpture, or opera, um, or painting, I think can bypass the rest of us and go directly to our heart. It, when we see beautiful art, uh, it can move us to it can move us to tears immediately, or it can move us to stand up and shout in celebration, or it can just take our breath away. Good art connects us with deep meaning. As an artist, before my brush uh, ever touches the page, um, I like to think that it, I, I dip it deeply in my soul, <laughs> and it is and kind of um, it's a I paint from a place that's not just my hand, it's not my head, and it's not just my heart. It's kind of a sacred combination of all of those, and so 
and I don't do, there's nothing else in my life except for coaching that demands all of me. I mean, um, it, I have to be fully present and I'm, I feel like every part of me is being used in the service of the creation of the painting. And it's not really just the skills of, that I've learned as an artist. It's not just um, uh, technique. It's really something far deeper that, that's, that you paint from the gut. That same principle is true in coaching, that we bring that same quality of, um, of presence and uh, uh, connection with uh, and working with clients so that we create a, a connection of deep meaning. Andrew Gide, G-I-D-E, is a French uh, writer and Nobel Prize winner from the 20th century. And he has a quote that I just love, this reflection, art is the collaboration between God and the artist. And the less the artist does, the better. In a similar way, I see what we do in coaching as a collaboration uh, with, between God, the client, and the coach. And sometimes the less the, the coach does, and the more we leave up to that sacred three-way connection, the better. I can think of no more sacred calling than to, to collaborate with God in the creation of sacred meaning in someone's life who's ready to move boldly and wonderfully forward with the life that they've been given and that they're feeling called to.